the prophet Job lost his family. His words were Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehishem Adonai Mevarach. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be God's name. And these have to be our words now as we face the loss of our wife and mother and sister and relative and, and friend, Sheila Silverman. And we say, Ananayanatan, that the Lord gave us Sheila. And wow, she made a big impression and gave so much to the world and touched so many people. And now Adonai Lakach, and now God has taken her from our midst. But because we were so privileged to have her as part of our world, we say, thank you, God, with the words, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevarach. Blessed be you, God, who lent her to us for these many years. This is a time in which we do need comfort, so we do what people have done throughout the centuries. We turn to the book of Psalms, and there in the 121st Psalm, it says, S-I-A-N-I El Harim. May I in your voice re as re may I don't know say Shemaim v'aretz. I lift up mine eyes to the mountains. What is the source of my help? My help comes from Adonai, Maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way. Your protector will not slumber. See the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian. God is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm. Adonai yishmart seitcha uvawecha me'atabi adolam. God will guard your soul, your going and your coming, now and forever. Together as a congregation, let us recite the words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Adonai ma adam v'teda ehu, ben enosh v'tachash O God, what are we that you have regard for us? And what are we that you are mindful of us? We are like a breath, our days are as a passing shadow. We come and go like grass, which in the morning shoots up renewed and in the evening fades and withers. You cause us to revert to dust, saying, Return, O mortal creatures. Would that we were wise that we understood whither we are going. For when we die, we carry nothing away. Our glory does not accompany us. Mark the wholehearted, and behold the upright, they shall have peace. God, you redeem the soul of your servants, and none who trust in you shall be desolate. And in the, uh, the book of Proverbs, there is a description of, of a woman such as Sheila, which says, Eshet chayo mi yimsa v'rochok mipnim nim mechra, v'tach ba le balal v'shalau lo yaksar. A woman of valor who can find. She is more precious than fine pearls. Her husband trusts in her, and so she lacks nothing. She does him good, never harm all the days of her life. She perceives that her labor is rewarding. Her candle burns on into the night and the night and the night. She got up at before seven and on her way, and and uh, at midnight she finally retired to bed. She re oh, and there were some gummy bears right next to it, right? No. Oh. She reached out to those in need and extends her hands to the poor. She is clothed in strength and dignity, and she faces the f future cheerfully. She speaks with wisdom. The law of kindness is on her lips. Her children 
They rise up and bless her. Her husband sings her praises, saying, Many daughters have done valiantly, but you excel us them all. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, it is written, L'chol zaman v'le'et l'chol chefetz takat ha-shamayim, et l'leta v'et l'mut, et l'tad v'et l'kornetuya. For everything there is a season and a time for every experience under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to discard. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. And this is just one of those moments which is both. For when you're a mourner, you find it very difficult to speak at a time like this. And yet what we know about mourning is you talk your way through grief. So I would say to all of you who are going to pay a condolence call, the best thing that you can do is help the family to speak by talking about Sheila getting them to talk about Sheila and then you can do one of the most important things because most of us don't know what to say when we go to pay a condolence call and that is to tell them a Sheila story tell them you know how she touched you and, and the ways in which you remember her and I know we're always worried because then the family will begin to cry and you think it's your fault but it isn't I mean that's part of the process of mourning we weep when we're able to and other times not a time to weep and a time to be silent. So um, this is a time of, of storytelling, of how uh, Sheila touched our lives. And, and so we uh, begin that storytelling with um, the oldest of the daughters, with Sharon sharing with us. And uh, Marvin, too, is coming up. certain sounds with my mom and the way she expressed her love for us. The sound of her rings tapping on the baking pan as she greased and floured it meant cake was coming. The sound of her sewing machine humming in the evening meant she was creating something beautiful. My mom showed her love for her family in so many ways. Latkes sizzling in the frying pan and the good china on the table for Pesach family vacations, and the chance to go to every youth group overnight and summer camp. She gave her daughters the opportunity to try everything, spending hours each day in the car driving to dance, music, sports, gymnastics, Hebrew school, brownies, swimming, art, and play practice. Her basement was filled with toys. It was a mecca for her 13 grandchildren and the snack drawers and the candy jars were always filled with their favorite treats. She threw a party at every opportunity, to celebrate birthdays, bat mitzvahs, anniversaries, weddings and holidays, always held at home and always catered completely by herself. She just never stopped moving and she never stopped showing her love through those actions. My mother loved to create, from theater costumes at the Cleveland Playhouse, to doll clothes, to matching bat mitzvah dresses for my sisters and I at my bat mitzvah, and my bridesmaids' dresses. She loved to garden, and she created beauty in her yard. She created an extended family from her friends, and seemed to attract people from all walks of life. She created this family. She started with my dad, Marty, 52 years ago. Then she added three daughters in three years. When that wasn't enough to fill her heart, she reached out into the world and added two more. She was thrilled to welcome each new son-in-law to the Silverman clan 
and especially loved her grandchildren. My mom was the energy and the life force of our family, and she will be missed more than you can imagine. In September of 1984, I was blessed to meet Sharon and to be welcomed into a family that was run by a patriarch but especially a matriarch, whose life was spent teaching and living by the credo family, first, last, and foremost. <clears throat> if you were fortunate enough to be raised in the Silverman household, then your place, it was assured. If you came in as the boyfriend of one of their daughters, your membership had to be earned. It was not earned through initiation fees as one would join a country club. That would have been easy. It was earned when Sheila and Marty realized your commitment to their daughter. And Sheila was a sergeant of arms at the gate. Winning over you, Sharon, was easy. Winning you over, Sheila, not so much. As I took, as I look to the special group of men that I have the privilege and honor to call my brothers-in-law, you all know what I'm talking about. It was never easy applying for membership in this exclusive club, and I was secretly happy that I had already gone through the vetting process that you were currently going through. But once, and I might add almost immediately for me, that it was determined that my commitment was to Sharon, that she was the most important person in my life, that I would always honor and take care of her. Then Sheila and Marty welcomed me in and treated me as the son they didn't yet have. She was an excellent cook. She knew my favorite food and was always prepared for me when we came from Ann Arbor to visit. For me at the time, it was Ramaki. I can still smell it and hear it sizzling in the pan. The comment was made several times from the girls that they never ate so well as when we came to visit. I was asked to recall my favorite Sheila memory. It happened in August of 1990. I remember we were, Sharon and I, Marty and Sheila, we were sitting down to dinner in Chagrin Falls and Sharon and I gave them a wrapped box that in it had an extra place setting. It was how we told them we were going to have their first grandchild. I will never forget the expression on her face. It is indelibly etched in my mind, the memory of her tears and the pure joy that followed will always remain with me, even though you are gone. Because once again, it was all about family. This past week, as I sat in her hospice room, a silent observer at times, I watched with great pride as her daughters, all working together for the common goal of taking care of their mother, who was facing her greatest challenges in her finest final hours. I was there, and I was amazed as to the grace, the compassion, and the strength that all of you exhibited. She's taught you well. You have learned from the best, and you are now ready to carry on her, tor her torch of family, first, last, and foremost.
Marty and Sharon and Marvin and Elaine and Aaron and Jody and Jeff and Sylvia and George and Miriam, sister Cynthia, all 13 of you uh, grandchildren, Melissa, Andrew, Marcia, Marcella, Peyton, Brandon, Olivia, Cecilia, Patrick, Andrew, Peter, Alana, and Ellis. And the members of the Cleveland Canasta Club and friends. You know, the beauty of being a rabbi in the same congregation for 40 years is that you grow up with families and they touch your life forever. Sheila Silverman is uh, just one of those people. For I always admired her that she was a model for so much of what I believed in, giving to others, making the world a, a better place. And indeed she did. So who was this woman? This woman who got robbed of the final years of her life with that devastating disease of, of dementia. She was born in upstate New York in a town near the Catskills that I was told that doesn't exist anymore once she left. Her parents, Martin and Fanny, with whom she was so close and took such loving care of in their lives, moved to West Palm Beach and there she graduated high school and went to Florida State for a few years until she discovered her, her true love, that of sewing and creating. So she got a, fortunately, she got a job with uh, the music carnival. Um, maybe some of you remember it here in, in Cleveland. What? It was, um, she was a costume designer and terrific at it. She had that magic touch in her thimble, one of the things that the many collections that she had. And, um, she had that ability to think and, and create what was in her mind with her hands. It was during one of the uh, stays here in, in Cleveland where in the music carnival they would be in, in Florida in the winter and come up here in the summer that uh, Lois Cooper fixed her up with Marty and a new creation of fabric, a love affair that lasted for right on almost 53 years. In, in, is it in June or J July, I think, if I remember. Marty, you had to be taken by Sheila's beauty, by her, her red hair and blue eyes, by her take charge attitude, by, as Marvin indicated, the dedication to family, for family was the center of her life. You must have been taken by her infectious laugh and delight in life. She was one that sensed that life was short, and so you do what? Eat dessert first, right? Especially if it were dark chocolate. And she did. There were times she ate dessert first. So Marty, you and Sheila were happy. She was, um, as many of us know, a terrific cook. Her chocolate chip cookies were famous. You kids didn't like them, right? The grandchildren, uh, they, you don't want any of those. The lasagna, latkes, as we heard in, in Sharon's beautiful, beautiful speech of the memories. The baked goods, a uh, lemon meringue pie that almost reached to the sky. Um, uh, she loved key lime pie. And, and as uh, many of us know, she did all the pastries for all the bat mitzvahs and the weddings and all the other things. You, Marty, uh, were an only. And Sheila's family was far away, and so the two of you developed that extended family at Temple Emanuel with the Sisterhood, the Couples Club, and with the uh, Cleveland Canasta Club that never played Canasta, <laughs> but got together <laughs> to be with each other uh, 
There's uh, the Custons, the Boardmans, the Richmonds, the Sloans, the Greenbergs, the Neesonsons, and probably others that I'm forgetting right here. Who, who am I forgetting? Oh, on the Solomons. Oh, yes. I'm sorry about that one. I knew that. So I knew I was going to forget somebody. Sheila Love, as we heard, to throw a party. Love going to the theater, the pops, the ballet, the Broadway series. And Marty, you were happy. And then the three girls came along, Sharon, Elaine, and Jody. And Sheila was there, as you indicated, for all of your activities, sewing, skating outfits for you, Halloween costumes, band uniforms, the Heights Singers out, uh, outfits, um, 225 kids in it. In, oh, can't even believe it. She altered all you who were vertically challenged members of the family. And, um, and that creativity, as we heard, extended to, uh, to her yard. You'd walk by and all the flowers were absolutely gorgeous. So gorgeous that, of course, as you reminded me, that one year they won the award at, for the home beautiful in, uh, in University Heights. Um, and then there were all the social justice activities. Uh, Christmas was always spent in service to others. Uh, the feeding at St. Augustine, or the volunteering someplace at that time. The, grew, the girls grew up with a real model, a real role model that said you give to others and you care for others. Um, um, but that was not the end of such reaching out and caring for others. For you, Marty and Sheila, decided, well, they have, you had more room as described in your heart for just the three girls. And you wanted more, but physically not able to have your own. So what did you do? You researched, and then you reached out and went to El Salvador to adopt a, a lovely a six-year-old girl, uh, Sylvia, who became a member of this extended family. It was from this gesture that uh, you influenced others, others who uh, went there and, and adopted children and brought them into their life and to the very same place in which you returned a few years later to adopt Miriam, who was three years old at the time. You all became um, a, a United Nations family who practiced justice and love for one another and for the world. These adoptions led the family to involvement with others who had adopted from foreign countries and, and their activities. Uh, and a whole new world opened up for you as a family. And then when Miriam needed additional help, you turned to Julie Billiard, and that opened another whole world for Sheila to volunteer at. This was besides all the other places that she had given her time and her heart. So I, I just going to read this long list to you so that you remember all the things that Sheila was involved with. And you didn't put on here Temple Emmanuel, so I, I, I have to put that. So the Mount Sinai Hospital of Children's Ward, the Rainbows Babies and Children Hospital, Health Hill Children's Hospital, Menorah Park, Montefiore Home, the Providence House Crisis Nursery, Help Children Home, the Belvoir PTA, the Wiley PTA, the Heights Band Tour Chairman, the Heights Singers Tour, you didn't put in here about all the chaperones and all the places that she went co-sponsored of Vietnamese family, resettlement of Russian Jews, volunteers of America, St. Augustine, Give a Christmas, uh, Lutheran's Children Aid Project, Orphans Abroad, the Gulf War, Cookie Drive, and on and on and on. Uh, but returning to Julie Billiard, Sheila gave her heart and soul there. She became friendly with the nuns who admired her and she admired them. And she started in her usual organized way to raise money on behalf of the school. And when it was all over with, she had raised a million dollars for the school. The money helped pay for repairs to the building, brought, bought 1,500 books, computerized the library, etc. Sheila was one of those who would not take a no for an answer. And so she was able to go out and snore gifts for the school and for various silent auctions. And she served there on the advisory committee as well. Wow. You know, 
some people in, in a lifetime don't achieve half of that. And besides that, she was a foster parent for two babies and became an adoptive family and be, and for, a, for a Vietnamese family. If that's not enough for Sheila, she was how about a flea market junkie, a house sale advocate, a bargain hunter. I was, told me she bought that van at the house sale. <laughs> now all this while having everything organized in the house, operating a daycare service for children after school, and being a terrific mother, wife, and grandmother. And I'm exhausted just reading this. <laughs> you, her daughters, admired your mother. She was your role model. A role model of putting family is the foremost of being there for every activity of you knowing that she was always on your side and always behind you and having enough love to give it away to those who were fighting for social justice causes like taking coffee you told me to the teachers over at Belvoir school at that time marching for a new contract that paid a living wage and clever enough to mix up your Hanukkah bags that you thought you knew what you were getting and, and all those little kinds of things. You laughed at the fact that she knew the right place where to get the candy on the 4th of July parade. And God forbid anybody should get in front of them, you know. <laughs> um, or riding her tricycle in the, in the parade. You admired her energy and creativity, the Energizer Bunny kind of thing. You admired the love affair that mom and dad had, their joy of life, their taking advantage of opportunities, and their traveling together to places like Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, Arizona, on and on. You admired that mom was always willing to volunteer to do whatever was needed to be done. And thus, you looked good because your mom was there to help. And she taught you how to organize your life Perhaps most of all, you admired her love for all these 13 grandchildren right here. She loved to take you places. Um, the car was lined with, with uh, kids' seats. Loved to have you in your house. Um, your parents um, wouldn't let you have sweets, or some of you. And, and so what would she do? She'd kind of push it in your direction and look the other way if you snuck her dark chocolate kisses or her gummy bears. And, and of course, her famous uh, chocolate chip cookies uh, were always there just special for each one. Uh, George told me that he, uh, we had a conversation just a minute ago, that, that not only were the cookies there, but then cookies to take home with all of you. Um, you had a, a deep love for your grandma, and all of you admired her great source of joy at life. She had that great laugh and loved slap, a slapstick comedy. Uh, I love Lucy, the Three Stooges, Golden Girls. Even while at Montefiore's memory clinic when she could no longer talk, she would laugh hilariously at the, at the various shows on television. I could go on and on. Some of you as grandchildren got cheated in these last years. But I have to give all of you credit for the great care you gave Sheila these last years. Marty, you became the caretaker, the laundry man, the shopper, the meal pre preparer, the daily visitor of Sheila. And you, her children, made sure that she was well cared for by visiting her, watching over her, and making sure that the five caretakers at Montefiore gave her extra attention. So what more could a mother want except to see and know that her daughters had married well? Great sons-in-law, Marvin and Aaron, Jeff and George, who treated her with respect and love, even if one of them would come in and cut the centerpiece out of the cake that she was making. But I won't say who that is, Marvin. Uh, <laughs> she would be delighted and happy to know that her daughters have grown up as independent women who could stand on their own two feet, 
follow her lead of caring for others and making family the center of their lives and then to have the bonus of grandchildren some of them who bear her red hair and blue eyes and and her most importantly grandchildren who are kind and caring in their ways her Hebrew name was Simcha which means rejoice and this we have to say that Sheila rejoiced in life and rejoice, rejoiced in doing all the things that she did and how much she gave to the world. What more can you ask for? So we say goodbye to Sheila Silverman. We say to Sheila, thank you. Thank you for being such a wonderful role model of, of, a, of a great wife to Marty, a wonderful mother and grandmother and devoted citizen of this community, of giving to so many and changing the world in little ways. So we say l'chiba shalom, go in peace, Sheila, for a job well done. Now I know that there are some of you are out here sitting and saying, oh, I wish you had said this or said that, Rabbi. Well, this is your opportunity, your opportunity in these next moments to speak to Sharon and tell her of your appreciation and of your love. So we engage in silent prayer. Sheila Silverman's love that united us in life in which death cannot sever for her companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory for the gifts of her heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance for all these and more we give our thanks to God and may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight O God our strength and our redeemer, and let us all say, Amen. We rise for the Elmaleh Rachamim. Elmaleh Rachamim, Shochem Bamramim, Hamse Menuchad Nechuna Tachat Kamfe Hashechina, Im Kedoshim Taharim Kazohar Haraki Amazirim. Et nishmat simcha bat Mordechai lefegel shahalacha olama compassionate God eternal Spirit of the universe grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Sheila Pearl Silverman the daughter of Martin and Fanny Pearl who has entered eternity. Bal harachamim yasti rehu baseder kenafav lo lamim v'yitzror b'tzror hachayim et nishmata Adonai hu nachalata v'tanuach b'shalom al mishkava v'nomar amen. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance, may she rest in peace and let us all say amen. You may be seated. This concludes our service here. We will continue at the graveside for interment. Um, following interment, the family will receive um, at the um, at the home of Sharon and Marvin, which is at uh, 5456 Pine uh, Lane, which is off of Cannon Road. And they'll receive today until 6 o'clock, and then Shabbos comes, and then on Sunday from 2 to 5 in the afternoon and 7 to 9, um, contributions are suggested to the uh, Julie Billiard School or to the Susan Corman Foundation or the charity of your choice. <laughs>